volume of so in this case because the volume is the same the volumes got cancelled and you get 0 0.8477 Marco fine correct any units they cancel out Tiffany it's mass of something divided by mass of something else, so the oh. masses cancel out. Therefore, there is no unit. Specific gravity has no unit. All right. Read number two. Now, the gauge pressure in each of the four tires is 240 kilopascal. First, you have to change it into Pascal, multiply by 1,000. So, P, pressure, is 240 times 1,000. Each tire has a footprint of, you know the meaning of the word footprint there? When it hits the ground, the area that it covers, 220 centimeters squared. Is that a correct unit? All right, you've got to change centimeters squared into meters squared. Somebody tell me how. No. Divide by 100 times 100 because it's a centimeter squared. If you were changing centimeter into meter, just divide by 100. If you're changing centimeter squared into meter squared, divide by 100 times 100. All right, there it is for you. No suspense. So I wrote the weight should be equal to 4 times PA. Where did I get that 4 from? 4 tires. What are we trying to find? Aren't we trying to find the mass of the car? Okay, that's why I made M the subject. 4 times P times area by G. Right? That is 4 times 240 times 10 to the 3 because it's times 1000. Times the area is 220 times 10 to the negative 4. I'm showing you how. <coughs> 1 centimeter squared is 10 to the negative 4 meter square 100 times 100 and you're dividing it that's why it's 10 to the negative 4 okay so the mass of the car is 2.2 times 10 to the 3 kilogram yeah that's what is this okay it's not going off oh and look, I managed to cut that and separate it and bring it down here. You see this? Out. Okay, and this was funny things happening here. Yeah. Is that correct? So the absolute pressure is PA plus rho GH. Happy? So that would be that times rho GH. So what do you do? Rho GH. 10, 10 raised to 3 is 1,000. That's the density of water times 9.8 times height is 2 and so I get it as 1.21 times 10 to the 5 Pascal. You can try to calculate this at home because I will be uploading this today so you can see the whole lecture and the problems and check the calculations. So that's the absolute pressure. What else do you need? The total force. Now, how do you find the force? From the pressure, how do you find the force? Pressure upon area. Pressure. What? Force, uh, force is pressure upon area. No, no. Pressure is force upon area. So force is pressure multiplied by area. Okay. So how do you find the force? Force is pressure multiplied by area. And what's the area? Multiply the length and the width. Force is pressure multiplied by area, that's, that's the pressure, and the area is 22 times 8.5, isn't it? That's all multiplied, and you get that. Yes, in Newtons. And there is a B part. What does the B part say? What will be the pressure against the side of the pool near the bottom? It's near the bottom. So what do you know? I just told you. When I was teaching, I told you. 
if it's near the bottom, that means the height is the same. So does it matter whether it's at the bottom or on the side? The pressure is the same. Because the depth is the same. It's the same liquid. So I said P at the side is P at the bottom. Done. That's how I try to save time, doing all this. So that's the house, that's the water tank, five meter, and then the height is H, and you have to find the height of the water tank, don't you? Yes, find, no, you have to find the water gauge pressure at the house. But is the, is the figure clear now? Is you see the pipeline that brings water? That is the pipeline that brings water to the house, isn't it? Well, it's green water that flows anyway. Come on, I'll stop it right there. Isn't H the opposite side? 110 is the hypotenuse, so from that you can find H. I did not, and if you can, just find that out. And then uh, gauge pressure is rho G H, and you continue. Rho G H is, what am I doing there? Wait, what did I do? That's the important part of this question. What, what is that? Where did I get this from? What's the actual height of water? Right now, H plus five. Yes. Because remember, there's water in the tube. I mean, water in the pipe. Isn't there water in the pipe? So you don't care whether it's slanting or not. The height of water is actually H plus five. Are you with me? So that's why you have rho G and the total, and the total height there. Five plus 110. Okay, now put it. So it's 9.6 times 10 to the 5 Newton per meter squared is what I got as the gauge pressure. Really Tiffany, can you please read that? The B part? That's how you're going to hear her on YouTube. Okay. Sorry. How, how high Sorry. will the water shoot? No, no. So how do you answer that? A broken pipe in front of the house. A pipe breaking in front of the house and isn't the water going to shoot up? So how, how high is the water going to shoot up? going to shoot up, it's exactly going to shoot up. Yes, that's the answer. That's the answer. Thank you. Cannot shoot up. It cannot shoot up more than that. So it shoots up to the top of the tank, which is H's 5 plus 110 sine 58, which I think I got as 98 meters. Total weight, the B stands for the balloon there. Total weight is weight of the balloon plus weight of the helium plus weight of the load, which is the cargo. And the total buoyant force is the weight of air displaced. Is that right? The weight acting down is the sum of the weights of those three. And the buoyant force is weight of air displaced. And how do you find the weight of air displaced? Isn't it uh, rho air times volume of the balloon times G? Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time on that. Are you with me? Yeah. Density of air multiplied by the volume of the balloon times G 
is the total buoyant force. That's where students have a difficulty. I don't know why. Now, uh, so that means I'm going to equate the two. I'm going to say that they should be equal because I know the balloon floats. Doesn't it say it's floating? Look at the problem. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say it's floating, but it says, how large a cargo can it lift? It, that means it has to be just floating, isn't it? You, because you're maximizing the cargo. Because if you put anything more than that, it's going to come down. If you put anything less than that, it's going to go up. So they are balanced. Cancel the G's. So I make the mass of the load, the subject. Is that sensible mathematically? Is that correct? All I did is take these two quantities onto the other side so they became negative, right? Okay. Okay, I'm showing that that's how it became negative. Uh, I'm just changing the place. Wait, wait. What's that step? Explain, somebody. How do you find the mass of helium? Density of helium times volume of the balloon, right? Come on. Stop and think. Is the volume of helium equal to the volume of the balloon? Yeah, it's filling it. So the volume of the balloon is the volume of helium. Okay. And now, now continue. So rho air minus... I take out common, VB is common, that's why I took it out because you have the volume of the balloon in two of these terms. You see that there, don't you? So I took it out and inside I have rho air, which is here, minus rho helium. And then the values are not given. Is it given in that question? I forgot to type in the... It will be given to you. You need not memorize the density of air. It's 1.2. 1.29. Helium is 0 0.179. All those will be given. What's the formula for volume of a sphere? 4 by 3? Pi r cubed. That's why you see 4 by 3 pi radius cube minus 930. That gives you 920 kilograms. This is the maximum mass of cargo that that balloon can lift. Anything more than that is going to come down. Anything less than that is going to keep going up. That is 666 newtons, so she will sink. I felt so bad. But gradually, wait, 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 wait. Why am I saying that she will sink gradually? Exactly. What, what would have happened if that it was exactly equal? What would have happened? She, then she could float anywhere she likes. I mean, that is a particular case not going to happen in real life. You know what I mean? It should be perfectly matched. If one is a little bit more, you know, either she will go up or she will come down. If it's exact, you can make it float anywhere you like. It's balanced. But that's not, that's not going to happen. So gradually, because the difference is not much, right? She's going to sink, but she's going to sink ever so slowly. Okay. Did you get that part? The second step? The total weight is the weight of wood and the weight of lead. PB there is lead. You know PB is the symbol for lead, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so that's the total weight acting down. And on the right side, you have the total volume of wood and lead multiplied by the density of water times G. If this is true, you're understanding much better than many other classes when I teach this. Okay, and then... Let me explain that. Can I cross out the G? 
Yes, that's what I did in the next step. The G's are gone. And what else did I do? Volume is mass by density. Do you see that? Do you recognize that? Hey, volume of wood is mass of wood by density and the, and the volume of lead is likewise. Can I go on? What is that? What is that now? I rearranged. Do you see what I did? I tried to bring this term. Ah, this one doesn't write sometimes. Okay. This one, do you see it? On the left side. And try to put wherever I see lead. Look. Watch. Is that correct? I try to bring those two terms together. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And then what I did is, I collected the other two terms, where I have wood on the right side. That's why you see the wood term on the right side and the, the lead one on the left side. Okay. Now, mass of lead is taken out, so you have 1 minus rho water by a density of water by density of lead, does the same thing on the right side. That's just math. I just brought these two together, see? Isn't that the same thing here? Just put one underneath the other, and uh, kind of same thing here, look. That's the same. And I took lead outside, so that's why that's one. Anyway, finally, that's 1 by 11. Why, why did I put that as 1 by 11.3? <coughs> yes, because it's supposed to be density of lead divided by density of water, which is 11.3, right? Okay, because it's the other way. That's why I put it as 1 by 11. I did the same thing on the side. 1 by 0.5, that's given. And uh, now it's simple math to calculate that. Ha! Huh, I stopped doing it. That's where I got tired.